ABC, and I'm um, talking with uh, Emily Nielsen from Punk Rock and Paintbrushes. So uh, tell me a little bit about uh, Punk Rock and Paintbrushes and how it got started. Great, yeah. Um, basically, it was a happy accident. Um, I have worked in and out of music production and touring for my whole adult life. Um, I have worked from pop music to warp tour to punk rock and everything in between so in and out of music and i went into remission from cancer in 2007 oh, wow. and then i actually went into remission i did a painting not that i am a painter because i am not but i went and did a painting with um a friend of mine who sings for rise against tim oh. mcclarath and so him and I created this art piece and it was a green ribbon for my um, uh, survival. And Tim painted these lyrics to a song called Survive that really was important to me through my whole adventure and um, experience battling cancer. And once we did that, someone had an idea to continue doing it. They first had thought that it would be a great idea to auction that piece but um i didn't it's actually just behind me still it's 15 years old now so um had it for a long time and we actually painted it together in australia where where i lived and um we we met back in warp tour back way too many years ago that will age age me so um but um so yeah we did this piece and so basically what we created is an event called rock against cancer and we worked with people affected by cancer they did the ribbons and then we had musicians who painted the lyrics on top of the ribbons and that was these collaborative pieces and long behold many musicians that i had approached to be a part of this project were advising me that they too were visual artists and that they wanted to create a painting for for my event, Rock Against Cancer. And so they started stepping forward and creating these art pieces. And I had no idea they were visual artists. I had just thought that Matt Skiba was the singer of Alkaline Trio and was with Blink-182 and Warren was from the Vandals and Hunter Bergen was from AFI and that's all. And long behold, they were all these visual artists. So those were our core three that we started the collective with and we did an art show and it was great and they were all um very nervous because there's no backstage on an art show and there's no way to step away from someone asking you intimate questions about art you know your art's on the wall a fan might come up and ask you and you don't just create art because of some random thought it's an intimate feeling these people have and so they loved it they all loved it and they wanted to do it again so we did another show and then more musicians slash visual artists stepped forward and then it just created this domino effect because people were lifting one another up you know would jim Lindbergh have told me that he wanted to create art and be a part of punk rock and paintbrushes if his friends and colleagues and people he looks up to weren't a part of the collective, maybe, but maybe not. So they all lift one another up and they're in this comfortable community where it showcases their other talent. You know, it's not what they're known for. It's not their bread and butter, but it's also something they're very passionate about. So that's really how the collective started. And from there, it just kept growing. And it is an art collective. We do do art shows, but it's so much more than that now. And I'm just very grateful that I can be surrounded by these people who are inspired and want to create art and showcase that they're not just Jim Lindbergh from Pennywise, or they're not just Matt Skiba from Alkaline Trio. They have a lot of other talents that they want to share with people. Yeah, that's that's really cool. Are you are you still doing the uh, Rock Against Cancer, or was that kind of like a one-off type of? No, it wasn't or? a one-off. 
the first time we did it was in 2007. So uh, about yeah, 15 years ago. And we do host them here and there. Um, we haven't held one for a while. It wasn't an annual event. It wasn't, you know, something we did every two years. It just when it felt right, because we don't want to oversaturate it. We hold it in Los Angeles when we do host it. Um, so we have it when we want to have it and we will have one soon. Um, I'm just kept referring to Jim because that's how we connected. Right. But yeah, okay. we, Jim and I went to Florida uh, last week or a couple of weeks ago for an event because he had in his acoustic album and we looked at each other and we thought, wow, the first time he had ever played acoustic was at a rock against cancer event in 2011 wow. and i i was laughing because he i remember reached out the night before and was like i don't want to do this i can't do this and i was like yes you can you can do it and i thought wow i'm glad i made him do it so um but we had our last one in i think 2015 so it's been a good seven years which is a while um but, you know, with punk rock and paintbrushes getting busy and everything, we just haven't really done a Rock Against Cancer event. We do want to because it's also not about funding, um, you know, getting funds for cancer research and so forth. It's about getting funds to better the lives of those going through cancer. Like last year we were in Sacramento and we had a print of me and Tim's work because we don't sell the original. And I met a woman who was going through chemo at the event and she was having a hard time. And she was telling me how she had to leave the festival to, to Uber and she had to save money for her treatments. And it was like, that's not what I want to hear because that's what I went through. Mm -hmm. So we sold this print. I, Tim was there. I talked to him about what I wanted to do and we sold this print for $500. And I'm just sharing because I thought it was a nice thing, not because I want a pat on the back, but we had this print sold for $500. We took the cash and we gave it right into the, to the woman, because that's what we want to do. I want, if someone's going through chemo, and needs a little bit of extra financial support, that's what Rock Against Cancer wants to do. I don't need to go give it to a research institute or this or that. I'm not saying that that's bad, but what my experience was, was any of that could help. Or for instance, and I have so many stories from Rock Against Cancer, but a very good friend of mine, his mother, was ill and so she did a painting she's a visual artist she did a painting and she linked up with the band sublime with realm mm -hmm. she doesn't love them she probably had heard of them before but they took a big you know train down to san diego and i brought them to the show and she stood on the stage and she just had a good time and it was a nice memory for her and her son and her husband and she did the painting with one of the guys and she ended up passing away shortly after. And they just shared how important that was and how that music, not that even Sublime with Realm was a band that she loves or wanted to see, but it was just the experience of what Rock Against Cancer created for that family and this rad memory. And it's just lyrics on a painting. You know, we're not asking them to save the world. We just want them to take five minutes to do the lyrics. And so that's essentially where punk rock and paintbrushes started okay nice that's really cool um let's see you have a few um upcoming art shows including uh, an all-women exhibit in uh, long beach on saturday um what can people expect at uh, some of the art shows or even the one that's coming up in long yeah beach? every art show is totally different um we started the collective and we had mostly male artists and there was a like a press mention about that about having mostly males and it affected me because i'm a woman and i thought gosh we need to have more females and this was many many years ago and so i really wanted to showcase the talent of these women and it's really cool because some of them you know they're all extremely talented and some of them i have met through 
their husbands that are professional musicians. And I love showcasing them because instead of say their husband being in the spotlight, we're bringing them to the spotlight. And that I feel is really important because it's, you know, we want to make sure that their talent is shown. And so this weekend we do have one on Saturday. It's um, an all day event and it's really, um, we're really looking forward to it. We have, I think 13 artists in the show and we have some artisans and this show, I feel like I'm explaining all these deep, meaningful um, events with you, but this show is an all women's art show. It's going to be amazing. But like, I just got back from the frame shop and I'm helping these two particular artists out because two of our artists live in the Ukraine and they're seeking refuge, you're, uh, you know, at the yeah. moment and they can't send their art and they can't send anything over because of the current situation. This was not a plan. They actually just did the video for Jim and that was the last art piece they did before everything started overseas and it's like do we do this you know I talked to them as they're as they're um safe in Spain at the moment do we do this art show with them it's like absolutely this is what it's about because we need to highlight what they're doing and what these girls are surviving and that's what we're about and that's what we're doing and then we have another woman in the show she's done a few shows with us and I reached out to her a few weeks ago about the show, getting ready for all the art. She's in a very deep coma. She's been in a coma for a month. It's like, what is happening, wow. you know? <laughs> and this was not, and I'm not trying to make this this deep, but it's like, wow, okay. You know, and it kind of is just, I think we're doing the right thing here. I think we need to continue this. And so for Tuesday, the, the woman who's in a coma still, we're making it happen. We're getting her art from her house and her friends are coming together to get everything for her. She can't be there and she can't be there with her art, but her art's going to be there. And it's just like the reminder of that we do need to be doing this, you know, and that like last year, just for instance, to go on a tangent or the last two years when COVID hit, the world stopped, things changed, you know, and punk rock and paintbrushes produced a coffee table book out of that because everyone was home. No one was on tour. We're all stuck at home. So Warren Fitzgerald, the, my co-producer with the book had the idea of creating it. And so we all came together and we put this book together that I'm very proud of in, I think it was a matter of three months, which never would happen because people are on the road. So it's just like one of, we did an art tour last year. And one of the artists said, he said, you're always in the right place, no matter how crazy it is, you're in the right place. You know, we decided to do an art show an all women's art show on March 5th, that I expect these two things to be coming up. And for me to be taking on this other load of these artists that can't be with us, no, but now it's like, okay, there's a reason that we booked this to like lift people up and to bring that. So that's our art show this week. Um, next week, we're going to Soho in Manhattan. We have artists like, um, I'm just mentioning where they're from in case it's just easier. Um, we have artists like Jason Cruz from Strung Out. We have art, um, Mark Mothersbaugh from Devo, Mike Gallo from agnostic front we have chris sherry his wife Lori. we have um sturgeon from leftover crack we have uh this woman beebs so we have a, a wide variety of artists and that is a christian hasoy the legendary skateboarder yeah um, <laughs> yeah and that is going to be a soho art gallery show it's very fancy and it'll be you know, a very special event and, and it's in a, it's in Soho in Manhattan. I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm excited, you know, it's going to be a great show. And then the next week we go to South by Southwest in Austin, and then we're on the Floggy Molly cruise the end of the month with everyone. So what can people expect? I guess it depends on which show you're going to attend. You know, it's all very different, yeah. but what you can expect is a very exciting event and a lot of art and a lot of 
artists that are passionate about what they're doing and and my collective that's very passionate about what we're showcasing so no matter where we are whether it's a floggy molly cruise or a soho art gallery or a woman's show you know the common denominator is that there's passion there there's community and it's all this love for art and music and just creativity yeah definitely it, it seems like uh art and music can kind of help heal too a little oh a thousand percent i mean um i think i mean that's that's really for i think i mean for myself it is and for for so many people you know i i only hear what my artists i work with and my clients how they've affected people and that's just glimpse of what I hear how they've affected people and then you see what they hear from their fans and it's you know times 10 so it's absolutely you know save lives it saves lives it saves I mean it saved my life it made my life better art music all of that you know we it's something that especially today we are forgetting because technology is taking over and everyone's looking at technology and everything that's more important than art and music but you think well what is you know more important and and even with children in schools and you know it will we gotta teach them math or science which i'm not saying um which i'm not saying is not important but art and music is is extremely important and yes it does save it does it changes lives you know yeah totally um do you think that uh, there's sort of like a community that builds up in punk rock as well as in art that there's that everybody kind of supports each other, even though you know there's difference of opinion or whatnot, but there's always seems to be this connectivity I've, I've found in both. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think, you know, in punk rock and what you know what what is punk rock, I guess, is, is really right. the question, right? I mean, I, uh, you know, one of our my favorite artist that we work with is uh, Charlie Tuna. He's extremely talented and he's well known from his hip hop band, Jurassic Five. So is that punk rock? Yeah, like I know him, he is, he's the most punk rock guy I know, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and so is punk rock the music or is it a state of mind, you know? And, and I myself as a grown adult, I might not look like that, or, you know, I'll, I'll, we'll have an art show at say punk rock bowling. You know, I don't, I don't come off as that as much now, but you know, oh, I'll show you, you know, my photos from the nineties or the eighties, you know, and um, I was punk rock, but you know, I think, well, I still am. I still have that mentality and we all do. And that's the, that's the great thing about it is that most of the artists that are in our collective and that we do work with, it is that punk rock community and I've been engulfed in it through, you know, our artists, because if we're at a festival or an art show and say people don't have the ability or, or uh, if they can't go speak to Matt Skiba or Jim Lindbergh or Steve Caballero, you know, here I am. And so they come in, they want to tell me those stories and I love it. And I love it so much. And I'm able to be that in-between person. I'm able to share those stories with other people. And I think the punk rock community is important. And we just had our holiday show in December, I guess it was a few months ago, but the amount of people that came up and said, you know, we come to this every single holiday and we love it. And it's so wonderful. That's so cool to hear that we've created this community and they might not be able to come and maybe buy an original art piece, but they come because there is that sense of community and that sense of belonging at the art show. Yeah, definitely. And one could almost argue that hip hop kind of is like an kind of spirit with punk rock too, because both of them have like the DIY ethics, you know, and kind absolutely. of have that state of mind too. So, absolutely. Yeah, I absolutely agree with that. Um, so, let's see. And some of the artists you, um, work with is kind of like it's pretty varied too because some of them work in different mediums some of them work in paints some of them work in uh, sculptures and photography um, right. how 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 do, how does that all kind of come about do they do they uh, kind of find you or are these um, artists that you've known through the years or 
Yeah, mostly the artists we work with, we have known through the years. Um, and as far as, you know, people ask, like, what type of art is at the show? And it's like, well, are we talking about Warren's sculptures? Are we talking about Stacey Stevenson's photography or Charlie Tuna's oil paintings? It's so different. You know, there's no really answer I can give people because it is so different. But for the most part, we have artists that we've worked with through the years when we produced our book last year you know we do like to keep to those artists because we you know focused on them with the book um and as far as you know with the pandemic we had a collective and we wanted to give as much work and art shows to those people if i said yes to every artist that wanted to showcase in our shows we i my I'd lose my mind you know and I love when people send their art I love speaking with with people but it's just we we want to focus on the artists we do have it's definitely you know uh quality over quantity and I, I don't I don't want to expand to 50 new artists that's not really a goal of mine it's more to show the love and the um and the um you know commitment and the care for the artists we currently have so a lot of them are you know artists we've shown and worked with um but we open up like we have different artists like this weekend for instance you know we have a lot of women in our book that are not showing on saturday because they've shown with us a lot so we've opened it up to a lot of different women that maybe have never shown in an art show before or maybe they've shown in one art show and I think that's important to be able to have them a part of it. It's not what we do every day, but it is a way to open art shows to other people, but we don't wanna do 52 art shows a year. You know, We wanna do half of that and have them be great art shows. And so, we also want to stick with our collective. The thing is, is we travel with the show. So if we have the same art show going from New York City to Florida, to Texas, to California, that's okay because it's this maybe the same artist, but they're in different areas. Right, and different people can go and see it that might not have been able to go to the, some, some of the other ones. That's correct, yes. Um, is there, uh, so there's also art that's available to buy on your website. Um, are there any upcoming projects that will be sold on the website as well? Um, yeah, we have art on the website. I mean, it's more of a reference point. We okay. do art on the website. It's not, you know, our end all be all. It's not definitely not my forte of, you know, um, doing all the web orders and stuff. Um, we love selling art in person. That's our, that's our thing. Um, we do a lot of prints online. We do have art prints online or, you know, people can look uh, as a reference on the website to see an artist's work. And so if they want to do a commission piece and so forth, but as far as our online sales, they are there. Um, and we have our website and it's wonderful, but um, it's not, we want, it's not what my focus is um technology is great this is funny because i always talk about this technology is great but we want, want tangibility we want i want to meet people i want to talk to them face to face i want them to touch the art to see the art that's important social media is important as well but it comes down to the actual artist and the conversation and the experience that people have and that's just me being the way I am, um, you know, and there's the whole NFT world. I'm not against NFTs, but it's an interesting thing that it's, you know, with physical art versus digital, there's not a right or wrong, but I come from a place where I, want things to be in person i want them to be real and i want to have experiences i want someone to buy art at a show and look at it and remember that moment they met the artist and they have it on their wall you know not from something online although 
that's amazing because we aren't traveling around the world every day. So we can sell art to Italy. We can sell art to Japan because if we can't go there, we need to still get it out. But the goal, of course, we want to go to all those places. And of course, we want to meet those artists. You know, again, when I was with Jim in Florida a couple weeks ago, he had some of his fans come out and fly to the show. And it was so great because we put a face to the name. And, you know, they said, oh, my name is X, Y, and Z. And I was like, oh, I know you. I know your address and your email address and all that because I'm constantly in contact with them. You know, our customer service isn't some office, you know, out in the middle of nowhere. We're a small company. So it's very, that was really cool to be able to have that connection to Jim's fans. You know, he knows them, but some of them I've just been an email contact or phone contact or whatever it may be, or shipping art of Jim's out. And so that really was nice to be able to meet them because that's important to me to have that like intimate relationship and not just an email address, let's say.